Hey there guys and welcome back to Pokemon Platinum. In the last episode we went surfing and battled a whole bunch of shitty water types and that's probably what we're gonna end up doing in this episode as well. First of all, item over here, it's... Oh, that's actually pretty good. Not the worst thing you can find. Alright, uh, who is... Who could I technically use this the best on? Or I suppose I could just hang on to it for a little while. That's probably what I'll do. Do I have... Why am I fishing? I'm not exactly sure what I was going for here. Maybe I would... Oh, I think I can remember this. Now, I think I was trying to level up someone so that using the rare candy on him wouldn't be such a waste. Because that's the thing with rare candy. If you basically only need one more experience point to get to the next level, then that's all the rare candy will do. So that's virtually nothing. But if it just leveled up, it's gonna need a lot of experience points to level up, and then using a rare candy is a good thing. So Octillery is kinda lagging behind, and he's not really gonna get much action against all these water types we're gonna find here. So the rare candy using it on him is probably a good idea. So, damn it, that's still not enough to level him up. Maybe I should have just continued on and battled that trainer and switched him out immediately or something. Or hope that trainer had a shitty water type that Octillery may be able to defeat. Like a Finneon or something. Another Magikarp. I don't like the uh, the white whiskers on the female Magikarp, it just looks so uncanny. I mean, I've been playing Pokemon since the first generation and watch the cartoon and all that stuff, and Magikarp has always had yellow whiskers, and the white ones just kind of weird me out. I really... same thing with Gyarados, I really don't want a female Gyarados for that reason. I guess it's just maybe a, a personal issue, but I just really, really don't like the female versions of those. So can I finally get a male one that doesn't weird me out so much? Yes, much better. See, these are yellow, these are the ones I grew up with. This is the good Magikarp. Alright, Octillery, flash cannon the hell out of that thing. At least that move is finally getting some usage. I don't think I've ever used that with Octillery before, before this episode. And this should level him up. Finally. Level 42. Does he get a new move? Signal Beam. I'm pretty sure that's worse than every other move it knows already, so... Although it may be slightly better than Aurora Beam, for the time being, I suppose. I mean, I think he's gonna get Ice Beam as the next move he learns through leveling up anyway. And if I need an Ice move, I have Porygon Z, so it's not a big loss. And Rare Candy, level him to 43. There we go, I think he gets Ice Beam at 45. Or 46. Fairly soon, at least. Alright, away we go. Been stalling for way too long now, let's see what this guy has. I know we can surf, but I'd rather swim instead. Does seem weird, I agree. Yes, we have Pokemon, we have these slave creatures, might as well use them. Ooh, a Gyarados. Nifty. At least that's not a shitty water type, though it is one we've faced like a dozen times already. I know there's only a finite amount of Pokemon in the Sinnoh decks, but still. Get Octillery out of there, bring in a Rotom. Oh crap, he's paralyzed. When the hell did that happen? Dragon Dance, that might... Actually, no, I don't think Gyarados learns a whole lot of physical moves through leveling up. Yeah, Rain Dance. That's a genius idea there. If only he actually went for... Uh, actually, does he have any moves that could hit me? When does Gyarados learn Aqua Tail through leveling up? I think it learns that through, through leveling up, at least. Like, it, his only attacking move might have been, I don't know, Thrash or something, and that doesn't affect Rotom, so maybe that's why he went for Rain Dance. Just trying to explain the AI's erratic behavior here. Tentacruel. Crap, probably not going to be able to run away from that one again. Yeah, definitely not going to be able to do that with Artillery, because he's slow as balls. And now Octillery is going down. Oh well, no big loss there. At least now we can bring in Staraptor or something and run away. Damn it! I hate that can't escape bullcrap. 
Okay, Staraptor. At least he can help me run away. Because I don't really feel like fighting this Tentacruel, especially because... I don't know if we're close to the next Pokemon Center or not. Oh, actually... Wow, I just say that and we're right bloody next door. So, let, might as well use the Black Flute, I guess. And where's that Waterfall HM we got last time? All the way at the bloody bottom. Should have used more TMs. Here we go, Waterfall. Alright, teach Waterfall to Octillery because it's the only one that can get it. And it's not really a bad HM move to have anyway. So long, Signal Beam. Learn this episode forgotten like two minutes later. Never even used. And Waterfall, I guess it's not the worst move on Octillery. Because Octillery's attack stats are, I think they're either the same or not very far off. I think they're like both at 105 or something, or special attack at 105 and attack at like 100 or something. Octillery can definitely attack both ways. He's kind of a, a bisexual attacker. If you could... Well, you probably might just want to use the term mixed instead. Yeah, that didn't really... Not the best joke, but whatever. Heal up the Pokémon and then... Ready to go into Victory Road. Oh boy, Victory Road. The final cave before the Pokémon League. It's always really long, filled to the brim with trainers. Usually requires all the crappy HMs you don't want your Pokémon to have. It's gonna be fun, fun, fun. Put Staraptor up front, because he can run away from stuff, and I think Intimidate will also deter wild Pokémon, plus using the Black Flute. Maybe we can actually get through this in less than five bloody episodes. And of course, plenty of uses for Rock Climb in here, oh delightful. So we'll go here and... Oh. I thought we were gonna have to fight him when I went up there, but he turned around and saw me instantly. I guess I should have been more sneaky. Alright, Psychic, what do you have? Three Pokemon, Haunter. That's not a Psychic type, it's a Ghost type. It's not your specialty. Whatever, I'll let it slide. Straptor's probably faster than it anyway. Yep. And Haunter is so frail, it's not gonna survive anything. Payback. I would have laughed if it went ahead and used Curse. Like, oh, here, let me cut my HP in half for you, make it even easier for you to take me out. Uh, oh, critical hits. That was probably not even necessary. Alright, Staraptor, good job. Next, Gengar. See, now this is what I'm talking about. Finally, I'm fighting some challenging Pokémon. Dark Pulse. Makes sense. Shadow Ball wouldn't be effective. And he might get a flinch. See, I called it. And then he goes for Payback. That's probably the worst move you could ever have on your Gengar. Because Gengar is not going to be moving slower than a lot of things, it's not a physical attacker. And Dark-type moves are really not anything you should have on your Gengar, ever. Because honestly, Ghost and Dark, they hit the same thing super effectively, so if you're a Ghost-type Pokémon, you should never ever have a Dark-type move. Although I guess I could make an exception for something like Sucker Punch if you don't have any other priority. Because if you look at Shadow Sneak, which is a Ghost-type priority move, but it only has 40 base power. Add Stab to that, and that becomes 60. Which means it's still weaker than a Sucker Punch without Stab, which has 80 base power to begin with. Although Shadow Sneak will work if the opponent is not using an offensive move, so... I guess there's kinda arguments for both sides. Anyway, yeah, let's go with Calm Mind on your Guard of War. When facing a faster physical attacker that is totally going to destroy you. Makes a whole damn lot of sense, alright. Especially because pretty much any attacking move would have taken me out here. I mean, Staraptor's special defense ain't really all that good. But whatever. So long, Psychic, or... Well, he should... He's more of a ghost trainer. Two of his Pokemon are ghost types. Or, hell, poison types, even. And here we go with the wild Pokemon. Graveler, oh yeah, we haven't seen enough of those already. Every bloody victory road has these Gravelers in it. Golbats, too. So many Golbats. Although I do believe they did spice up victory road in Platinum quite nicely, as far as wild Pokemon go, because in Diamond and Pearl it was even more boring. 
Like here we have Graveler, Onyx, probably Golbat, but I'm pretty sure you can also get Gabite in here. And uh, Steelix. And I believe also some other new additions. I think you could also get like a Ghost, I think maybe Dusclops or something. Dusclops was definitely somewhere. But yeah, there's nothing else to do down here, so let's go back up. And then continue on this way, so... That entire lower area there is one big dead end. You can only really go there if you want to battle that psychic and get whatever item that was there that I didn't even pay attention to because it's probably not very memorable anyway. But yeah, another Graveler. Let's run away from it. And then... Shall... Let's see, we can go up there and then... Use Rock Climb to get down somewhere and maybe find some items or something. This victory road is definitely one of the more confusing ones. Like, I think the... I don't really remember the one in the Pokemon Ruby LP very well, but I think that one was rather straightforward. This one, not so much. You've gotta use, like, Rock Climb bloody everywhere. And let's see. I think this is an Ace Trainer, so we're not really gonna be able to tell what Pokemon is coming up, so we'll slap Octillery up there for no real reason. And I think she's a Bird Keeper, actually. That uh, dialogue kinda gave it away. Well, crap, I made Octillery forget Aurora Beam. Oh, nuts. Well, it's only a Noctowl. I mean, oh. I'm probably gonna get flinched to death now. Absolutely delightful. Oh, not. Way to go, Octillery. Alright, let's see how much a Surf does. Noctowl is kinda bulky. Not expecting any miracles here, but that is perfectly serviceable. That is actually surprisingly good. Way to go, Octillery. You're finally proving some use to me. And another Surf will take out that Noctowl. And down it goes. I think Noctowl is definitely a Pokemon that could have used a Mega Evolution. Because let's face it, Noctowl is absolutely shitty. It can take any, Im it can use any improvement it can get. Anyway, next up is Togetic. So let's bring in a Rotom. Because Togetic is pretty damn bulky. Even bulkier than Noctowl, I think. So we better bring in an Electric type to deal with it. Because it's, it's still normal in flying here, but for in future generations it will be Fairy in flying. Because Fairy is truly really the greatest thing that ever happened to the Pokemon games. If only there were any good Fairy types. I mean, Sylveon and Azumarill are pretty much the only ones. And Mega Mawile, I guess. Regular Mawile is still a piece of shit that no one's ever gonna use. Max Repel. Well, I suppose that could come in handy in here. Might as well use it immediately, because the Black Flute doesn't seem to be working that well. Alright, up we go. So that's a dead end, so I guess we have to go down here then. And I can see an item there, but no clear... Oh, we have to take those stairs to get to it. Okay, careful to not jump off any ledges. And another trainer. An another one of those ambiguous sprites. Could be an ace trainer, it could be a bird keeper. So many trainer classes use the same overworld sprites. Yep, ace trainer. Blissey. Nah, now that's a formidable opponent. For Octillery at least. Well, I, I guess I do have Waterfall. Oh yeah, Light Screen. That's gonna do you a whole lot of good against my Waterfalls. Boom. Probably not gonna be a two-hit KO, but should at least do decent damage. Also, longest draining health bar ever. Because of how much HP Blissey has, and holy shit that I just one-hit KO a Blissey with a Waterfall that wasn't even a critical hit. Damn, Octillery. Told you his uh, physical attack stat was nothing to laugh at. Anyway, I could go try and flamethrower the Magnazone, but he has Light Screen, so let's just bring in a Ground-type and Earthquake instead. See, now this is the Pokémon that should have been in the Steel-type gym, that should have been in the Electric-type gym, but was mysteriously absent from both. At least we get to see it in Victory Road. I like Magnazone, I think the design is definitely a big improvement for Magneton, I mean... Come on, Magnemite to Magneton, that has to be one of the laziest evolutions design-wise. Magnezone, I think, looks pretty cool, and it's perfectly usable in battle as well. It could be a little bit faster, I mean, it's 
on the awfully slow side and its move pool leaves something to be desired, but it's decent. If only the steel type wasn't nerfed in Generation 6, it would be a lot better. Like if Magnazone would still resist Dark and Ghost. Because with the steel type being super effective on fairies, Magnazone definitely got a bit of a buff there. Anyway, Flamethrower, take out the Glalie. Critical hits probably meditated the light screen there. Excellent work, Octillery. Ah, Glalie, a Pokemon I wish I could use, but it absolutely sucks at everything it does. Honestly, can anyone tell me anything that Glalie can do that cannot be done better by any other Ice type? Because I'm pretty sure Glalie has no uses whatsoever. Oh boy, Rock Smash. Delightful. Oh yeah, crap, no one knows Rock Smash. Gabite had that, but I got rid of it to replace it with Rock Climb. Uh, crap, does either one of those know any moves that I never really use? I think Torterra actually does. Yeah, when have I ever used Bite? Never. So, I guess we'll just have to get rid of that. Teach it Rock Smash, and then hopefully be out of this cave and be able to re remove Rock Smash before it learns Crunch. Probably a lot better of an idea. Anyway, what do we have? We have an old guy here and a tiny, tiny strength puzzle. I kind of like the strength puzzles. Shame they're not really around in black and white and X and Y anymore. Those were always pretty good. Uh, let's see, can I somehow bypass this guy, or is that not gonna happen? Well, what is even up there? And how am I gonna solve this? See, this one's making me think. Well, might as well just battle this guy first. I think I might have a clue at how you're supposed to solve this one. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, I think I got it. Ooh, a Mammo Swine. Now that's what I'm talking about. I wouldn't have minded seeing this thing in the Ice Gym either. Rock oh crap, it's faster. You know, I always underestimate just how fast Mammo Swine is, because it looks pretty damn slow, but its speed is... I think like 70 or higher based stat. Definitely a lot faster than you'd assume based on its design. Anyway, my water type's down and... Not really gonna send out Torterra against this thing. Luckily, I still have a Rotom and his trusty, trusty Hydro Pump. And that should be a one hit KO. Oh crap. Ice Fang. Mamoswine doesn't even have fangs, it has tusks. Maybe they should have given Mamoswine like an exclusive ice move that uses tusks or something. I mean, I think signature moves are definitely something that more Pokemon need. And then sure, they can give it a little wider distribution layer, like if it's a Tusk move, I don't know, give it to Dawn Fan or something. And look, it's a Rampardos. Oh, this thing is gonna hit me hard, so I better take it out first. That's the problem with Rampardos, hits really hard, but it cannot take a hit in return. And it's also really not all that fast, so you're lucky to be able to outspeed something anyway. If you can set up a Rock Polish with a Rampardos though, you are in for a treat. Because then it's gonna wreck stuff. However, Rampardos is weak to Aqua Jet, weak to Mach Punch, Bullet Punch, Vacuum Wave, pretty much nearly all of the priority moves there are. So that kinda sucks. Anyway, what else did he have? A Mothim. Well, we're off to such a good start with Mamoswine and then... We get the kind of let down Rampardos, and then we get the absolute piece of crap that is Mothim. Damn, dude, you need to get a better lineup. Because Mothim, that's one of those Pokemon that no one ever uses. Kind of brings me back to what I said about the Glalie earlier. Is there anything that Mothim can do that isn't done better by every other bug and flying type there is? I'm pretty sure Mothim on the bug and flying type scale ranks even below stuff like Butterfree and Masquerain. Anyway, push that one down, smash this rock here, and then push that one back up. Because if you push the other one down, you are not going to get very far. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in the next episode of Pokemon Platinum.